My name is Eric Landman. I'm a project manager and lead e-commerce developer at Earthly Interactive. Today we've got a topic of a broad range of e-commerce sites and solutions and really the bare minimum of what, what it is that you need to know about selling online. This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to cover this in about 25 minutes, I hope, if my timing's right. Um, I'm going to talk about what is an e-commerce site. The answer may be a little surprising to you. Uh, what you need, what, what sort of requirements you have to sell, some sort of challenges and concerns that you're going to run into. We've built a lot of sites and we've seen this many times and there are things that people just don't think about, so we'll list them out here for you. What are the possible solutions? And I've lumped these into three very broad categories, some of which overlap a bit, but we can talk about that a bit. And if you have questions, um, put them in the chat and Aaron will try to field them only for time reasons, or you could hang around at, at the end and ask them too. And if you're interested how you could move forward with one of these solutions. Um, an e-commerce site is a site that sells something and it, it actually doesn't have to involve exchanging money immediately, but usually it does. So these are the common elements that people typically think of with an e-commerce site. We've got a home page, and a lot of times there's some pretty, you know, pretty graphics on there, marketing messages. Usually there's some sort of category navigation. You click one of those categories, you wind up in a category page. And then after that, you wind up in a product page. This is all pretty obvious. You add something to the cart, go to the checkout system, and you may be able to register as a user or a guest. And typically you go through a payment gateway or other payment method. And, and by that, I mean, there are actually quite a lot of sites where they use other payment methods like purchase order or um, COD. Those are payment methods. So those are still e-commerce sites, you're buying something. Then there are emails kicked off usually to the customer and the admin administrator simultaneously. And there's typically a shipping or a tracking follow-up. So all that stuff is, you know, that's pretty obvious. That's what people are used to seeing. <clears throat> I'll give you some examples of what an e-commerce site is. This first one may be a little surprising. A nonprofit donation form. And I've got an example of that that I will show you. Um, Another one would be selling online courses for continuing access. We have a number of educational and nonprofit institutions that need continuing education for their certifications. More commonly, you'd have a site that sells simple products. And, and by that term, simple products, I mean, you have the widget and you buy the widget. There's no sizes or colors or anything like that. Very simple sales proposition. And you also have very frequently in the B2B world, the B2B means business to business, you have the ability to, for the user to put things into a quote and submit the quote and get a price estimate or proposal from the site owner or administrator. A lot of times this is done because the purchase is deferred or perhaps it's purchasing some sort of um, product that's going into a proposal that needs to be approved by a board of directors or, or perhaps a school board or a county, county board. And it might be months or, or many months down the road before it's actually purchased. And then, so those are all things which perhaps you didn't think of were actual e-commerce sites, but they are. And then we have what, what you might normally think of as the full featured e-commerce site, just something like where you go to shop like Amazon or Staples or Nike.com or one of those. So in terms of the basic minimum to sell, this is what you need to know. You have to know these seven things. You have to know, <laughs> surprisingly, some people don't know what kind of, what products they wanna sell exactly, and the quantity and options, and quantity is the key there. Uh, quantity hooks in the inventory, and that can be a little bit of a, a sticking point for e-commerce sites. You, you need to know what kind of discounts or promotions you want to give. You know, maybe you're having a site launch and you want to give a 20% off discount or free shipping or something like that. Um, some people don't care about that. You want to know what shipping options you have. 
And this is something, unless you've been involved in actually selling things online, is a little different than normal shipping because there are ways to connect through what are called APIs to go get live shipping rates so you know that your rates are correct and you're not shorting yourself or overcharging the customer. You need to know about design or at least uh, purchasing templates and installing them and choosing one that's suitable for your product mix. And you need to know about accounting and inventory. Okay, so you sold your first order, then what? What are your business processes? I mean, do you have, you export the orders via spreadsheet or do you, does it go into QuickBooks? Or, you know, how does that work? What does that happen? How, you know, how does that all work? Have you thought about that? Um, then you have to consider the cost of the solution and the support you're going to be getting from wherever it is that you decide to get this site built from. If you build it yourself, you'll be getting support from one of the platforms probably. If you have a developer, you'll be getting support from them. And you know, what does all that cost? It can be a little tricky to nail down. And then you have to talk about your domain and hosting. Now maybe you have a domain, you own it already, but if you don't, you've got to register a domain and that's, that's a whole nother process. Here's the challenges you're going to run into, I guarantee you. Um, many site owners underestimate the amount of time it takes to set up their own site if they're considering doing this themselves or even as high as hiring a developer. Um, even things like collecting catalog information, what products you have, what options, what the inventory is, the cost breakdowns, all of that takes actually a surprising amount of time. And you need to know, you need to have a realistic budget. And that's where you have to do some projections and figure out, well, how long is this going to take and what are the costs? Um, the turnaround time to a live site could be quite fast actually in the right conditions. But typically for a mid range or a larger site, it's two to six months out. That's how long it takes from the day you say go until it goes live. That's just what it takes. There are many possible delays along the way. And be aware that your solution could be in a couple of different stages, meaning, well, you might start with something small which is one solution and you might switch to a completely different solution because it makes more sense as sales grow and hopefully that's what happens. You need to consider the complexity of the solution uh, which is usually dictated by what you're selling. If you have one or two products to sell then the solution can be quite easy. But if you've got a very complex product mix with lots of categories and accounting integrations and shipping live rates and things like that, <clears throat> you're going to need a much more complex solution. You have to consider if you do need a developer, how do you find one? How do you know that whomever it is you're hiring knows what they're talking about and is going to come in at the price point that you're expecting? And you uh, are definitely going to be learning some new systems. Many people have not, for example, dealt with credit card gateways. That's a whole bizarre world where they have their own terminology and there are lots of delays and costs setting up these, these gateways. Uh, and, and somebody who's been through that can help, help with getting through all the various hoops you've got to do to make that thing work. PCI compliance is a concern. Um, perhaps you've heard of that term. PCI stands for payment card industry. It's an industry consortium that was started by Visa and MasterCard and I think American Express and Discover jumped on the bandwagon. It's not law, it's not regulations, but what it is, is industry standards that are set up by these companies. And if you don't follow the PCI guidelines, ultimately they could yank your merchant account and you would not be able to accept any money over, uh, online. So that's, that's kind of a big deal, that'll shut down your business. Lately, we've been seeing more companies with ADA compliance issues, meaning there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a group of lawyers out there who are targeting types of businesses and they're hitting them because their sites don't conform to the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is what ADA stands for. So sites need to be, you should be, you should be considering that too. 
And finally, what sort of return on investment do you expect? Um, that's obviously pretty important. I've grouped the solutions into three very, very broad categories. There are some overlap with some of these, um, but very simply, the form solution is, uh, well, let me explain what this is first. We are looking at a benefit matrix. The X axis is effort, both in your time and a developer if needed. The Y axis is, is benefit, defined as the number and complexity of features. So there are three solutions we're going to be discussing. Um, they are a form solution, which basically involves adding some sort of e-commerce feature to an already existing site. An example of that might be, suppose you have a WordPress site and you wanna sell just two or three products with very limited options and limited shipping. That's actually a pretty good solution. So that's low effort and decent amount of benefit. Benefits sort of, eh, it's sort of subject, subjective. If it's exactly the right solution, well then, then the benefit's really high. Uh, software as a service, SaaS, is the second rather large category. And we'll, we'll talk about what that means. But uh, basically it's a service like Shopify or Big Commerce or one of those where you sign up and um, get going and it's all online and you're essentially leasing their application or renting their application. An open source platform is uh, a, yet a different solution. This is one where you have open source code and these tend to be bigger, much more complex sites. Uh, and, uh, although because they're more complex and bigger and many more features, they take quite a lot more effort, but the benefits are, are way, way higher. So here we're gonna talk about the three solutions. This is a bit of a breakdown of the characteristics of what these things are like. You see, there's a lot of no's here. <laughs> That's because it doesn't really do much other than have a form and maybe with a few products, products with a few options, um, very limited shipping options. There's, there's usually no live shipping lookup, so you have to figure out what the shipping will cost on average to ship your product. And you really can't customize much of anything. You can do a little style sheet work to make it look like your site, but that's, that's about it. On the other hand, it's really cheap. So this, this might be a good solution if you have the right circumstances. Here's an example of that. This is the donation form I was mentioning for the Foundation for Madison Schools. Um, if you click the donate blue button there, up pops a form and you enter your email address and your shipping address and your credit card information and you click submit and that's it, it's very simple. Um, there's also a give monthly option too. Um, so, so this sort of solution can be used for actual products too. It certainly isn't relegated just to this, but this is this is a nice example of it. You could go to their site and, and toss them a few bucks. They'd like it. Uh, software as a solution is a is a much larger category. At the bottom, I've listed a few of the platforms that this this uh, this sort of solution is. This is where you, you sign up and they're always trying to get you to sign up. That's like the first thing you see, sign up, sign up, try it for free. Um, they wanna hook you in to start using their service, which is fine. Um, but you know, it's good to know what you're getting into here. It's easy to sign up and it's usually free for a month or two. And they give you usually one storefront, maybe multiple categories, probably multiple categories. The navigation can be flexible. Then by the navigation, I mean the top category navigation and other things that are added to the site. You can have a lot more products if you, if you have a lot more products. So the form-based solution really isn't suitable for more than a few products because it becomes very unwieldy. So you need a, a more capable system. And this, this sort of solution does that. However, there are limited product types and options. And, and by that, I mean, there's usually just maybe about three different types of products. 
um, for example, a t-shirt's the classic example. You got your shirt, but then it's got colors and sizes. So if you have three colors and four sizes, um, you've got quite a number of, who can do that factorial? <laughs> you've got a bunch of different products individual discrete products with SKUs. And these type of systems will easily handle that kind of breakdown, that kind of product setup, but it, but it, it will not handle very well other things. Like for example, what if you're selling license codes for courses, it will not do that. What if you're handling bundled products and the bundle consists of configurable products? It won't do that either. So you have to be pretty careful about what sort of products you're selling. There are a lot more shipping options. There are usually live integrations with shippers like FedEx and UPS and the post office. Um, frequently though, it's an add-on charge to the base hosting charge for Shopify, for example. I know that the upcharge for live shipping is $19 a month. So they don't exactly make that super obvious when you sign up. So you've got to get in and look at the requirements. There are <clears throat> limited design options, meaning it's, it's possible to do a custom design, but it's actually rather difficult. It's much easier if you just use one of their canned templates. However, you have to make sure that that template looks like something you want your site to look like and that it fits in with your graphics, your logo, and, and sort of your look and feel. Um, they don't really have customer group flexibility very much. They do have some checkout flexibility, but not a lot. And what I might mean by that is uh, some of our customers have asked for things like delivery dates or delivery instructions or put a comment box on the checkout page, or they want to put up special promotions for a certain time frame over Christmas. So they want the ability to put right on the checkout page that they've got this special thing going on. <clears throat> Many of these systems don't allow very many things like that. Um, they usually are reasonably good at accounting integrations, but that also costs more. Account an accounting integration would be something like hooking into QuickBooks so that when you have an order, it synchronizes with QuickBooks um, so many times a day, or maybe every hour. Uh, these, these type of sites, are not that customizable. It's rather rather difficult comparatively, although it can be done, but it's at a higher price point. You have to use uh, not the basic program for these hosting companies. They do have predictable pricing, assuming you can figure out what it is and, and you might have to dig deep into the requirements to figure out what that might cost. Um, support is, as I mentioned there, ticketing or chat, and maybe that's fine. Um, what you probably don't have is you probably don't have direct communications like pick up the phone and call a developer and say, hey, I've got this going on. Can you help me solve it? Um, maybe you don't need it, maybe you do. So that's, those are the factors for this sort of solution. Here's an example of one of these sites. Uh, Looks nice, modern design, you know, it's got the flashy off-road colors going on there. Uh, but if you look into the site, you will notice that it's mostly sim simple products or products with simple options. Like, you know, you have a helmet and it's a certain color and a certain size. Well, it's not very complicated. Um, and, and we've done a, a number of these sites too. This particular one's running on Shopify. Then we're gonna talk about the last category, which is vastly greater in capabilities and also to some extent in cost, depending upon what you wanna do. Um, this is a solution where you, you need a developer. Unless you have a developer background, you probably will not be doing this, this level, but that's not necessarily bad because if you need these features, you've kind of gotta do something to be able to put your store online to sell to your target audience and with all the features. So for example, one of these things that open source code bases do that is not easy to do in the other solutions is multiple storefronts. And by that, I mean, we have a number of customers that have 
several different business units and several different marketing strategies and even different corporate entities that are under the larger corporate umbrella. And we have one installation that controls three or four or five different storefronts for them. One might be retail, another might be wholesale. Uh, there might be a third for a completely different brand with a different catalog and different product set. Um, so an example would be, uh, I built a store for Steep and Brew. Steep and Brew had actually six different websites running from this code base installation. One of their um, storefronts is consumer. So you can just go to steepandbrew.com and buy a bag of coffee. There's another one that's for licensee cafes. So Stephen Brew licenses their look and feel and their logos and all that, and their equipment to cafes. So that's a franchise sort of business model. So that, that's kind of the idea. And all of this, all of these websites were managed from the same installation. The key concept to these open source solutions is, is flexibility. You can do a lot, lot, lot of things. I mean, almost anything you can think of. Completely custom designs, pretty much any sort of custom options. You can, if you have certain requirements to have customer account IDs that people need to fill in when they register, just all, all kinds of things like that. So I'm not gonna list all of the things there and go over them, but you can read them. On the bottom there, is listed some of the platforms that do this. WooCommerce, to some extent, does most of these things, but it does not do others. Magento does all of these things, and Drupal does most of these things, and Craft does, uh, I would say, about half of these things. So it really depends upon your requirements. Um, I have an example of a a site that does this. This is a customer of ours in Verona. They sell curriculum to grade schools. And the curriculum is for developmentally disabled children and adults. So this is an example of a very rich site that has all kinds of stuff going on. They've got these little icons that indicate the type of programs, the educational standards that this curriculum adheres to. They have multiple products in this particular bundle, so you can order however many different quantities of these things that you want. They've got some video going on here in the gallery, and down at the bottom are product tabs, and way at the bottom of the page where it says research, those are attachments to this product page, um, a very common feature for many of the sites that we build, so the things like specification manuals or repair manuals or brochures or spec sheets, anything like that, uh, that is rel related to the individual product, this is a, a great solution. And that's exactly what they needed. <clears throat> oh. Yep. Just want to do a time check with you, Eric. Okay. We're at 129. Okay. Um, and then I've... seeing some questions coming over the transom, so I want to be sure we get those. Okay. I got three slides left. We'll go quick. Here's an example of a site where they don't actually buy things. Uh, this is Gresco. They supply furniture to libraries and schools. And you build a quote and you submit the quote and then you get it, get it approved by the administrator. And one of the reasons they go to a quote model is because, you know, if you're ordering 50 chairs, that's, you know, half a semi truck full of stuff and FedEx can't handle shipments like that online. So it's all quoted. And the last one I will show you is Graber products. Very, very complex products. You've got different lengths of benches and different finishes and colors and add-on things down at the bottom. And this one also has literature attached to it. And this is an example of a installation where there's two different websites running on one installation. Matterx makes bike racks and Thomas Steele makes furniture. So there you go. That was the bulk of the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Um, I, I want to be sure that we get to people's questions. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. 
this is not intended to be a, a pitch, but I want to let you know about Earthling. We are a website and e-commerce and web app development company, and uh, we are also a consulting group. So we're available to help with your problems on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And just quickly, we work, we do planning and consulting. We also do building and implementation, and then we do service and we do maintenance as part of our services for our clients. So I wanna be just be able to make sure that we get to these questions because we have some really good questions. Yeah. And let's do, let's uh, stop the screen share so that we can okay. uh, see sure. some faces. And I'll share with you the questions that I got. And actually, uh, the first one we have is, is there a special ADA compliance that is applied to e-commerce sites? I think that's a really good question. Do you know? Not special, but it, it actually tends to be kind of tricky because you've got a lot going on on the screen with an e-commerce site. There's pictures and bullet points and checkout systems. And you know, it's, 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 it's complicated. <laughs> um, yeah, but there are, there, there is one solution called Accessibi, which we've used, which seems to satisfy the requirements. Well, I'm not exactly sure that it satisfies the spirit of the law, but yeah, okay. it's, it's a tricky one. Hey, Aaron, <clears throat> we, also, we also use um, tools for testing before we start throughout the process. Like if somebody were to select a theme, um, throughout the process of development and then prior to launch and part of that quality assurance, um, we use a tool called, um, well, one of the tools we use is, is the WebAIM Wave Chrome extension yeah. that you can Wave. run tests on your website um, on a page at a time. Uh, we also, um, for projects, use uh, screen readers. So Chromevox comes with Chrome. It's not as good as, um, say voiceover with Apple or um, NVDA with on a PC, um, NVDA is free too. Um, so you can hear what it sounds like. And then we also do keyboard testing um, on the way I like to make sure people can check out and that sort of thing. So we, we do several mm -hmm. things to comply with WCAG, um, which is Web Consortium Accessibility Guidelines. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank to you, Vince. Make sure. So, because that's about 10% of the population that has some form of mm. um, yeah. either use it, oh, either mobility high. issues or site issues. And that's, that's important to consider. I mean, Eric mentioned that you, you want to be in compliance, but also if you're setting up an e-commerce store to support retail, which is what's happening with a lot of folks now, a good portion of the population you're helping are those that may not be able to leave home or may not be able to, to get to your store. So it is, it, it, that is a good question about compliance in e-commerce. Next question. Well, just one we, more thing about yeah. that, Aaron. SEO, it totally, making your site accessible is really great for SEO mm -hmm. because good. they, yeah. of course, um, search engines are not people. They can't see your screen. So they interpret what's on a page by um, your markup and stuff like that. So. That's a good point. Yeah, You'll, you're, it helps you get found. So it's sort of a two birds sort of situation. Uh, next question we have is, can you have three different stores from Shopify linked to one site hosted, for example, by GoDaddy? And GoDaddy was mentioned, but I think the question is about storefronts. I, I don't believe that's possible, no. Okay. And have, uh, Eric, are you familiar with uh, FAA to drop ship photography? I've looked at options for art and people recommended FAA for drop ship photography. Is that Federal something? Aviation Authority? No. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, Miriam, I am not, do you want to? Not heard of that. Yeah, that's not something where that was a question from Miriam. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so not sure. <laughs> so I like e-commerce. There's always stuff that comes up. It's like, oh, what's that? <laughs> it's true. It's a big world. Uh, oh, Fine Art America. So uh, I, yeah, no, it I sounds like maybe that's a service that. that they have, and that's not something we've done. Right, I have not heard of that. No. Great. Um. Are there any other questions? I want to make sure, you know, Eric knows 
a lot. Anything else that you'd like to ask about before we close up today? We've gone just five minutes over, so I'm real. Thank you, Eric. Yep. Um, yeah, okay. Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is this, we've recorded this session. And so we'll be posting that up. And um, we are also, I'm happy to field questions via email if you have any for us. And again, we're Earthling Interactive and we are website and web development experts, implementers, but we're also available to help with questions and, and to guide folks through the complicated world of getting started with e-commerce. So we, uh, we thank you for coming today. Thank you. And thank you, Eric. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.